last week on the girl talk show with Ajoa, this is what happened guys <laughs> if we say betrayal okay. like what's what's the, the first thing that you can use to 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 give it a meaning what would it be hello queens this is your girl Ajoa. welcome to the channel Ajoa goddess tv if today is the first time you are watching my videos thank you so much and to my utsabis you are always welcome to the channel so today's video is all about the girl talk show with ajwa and we are still tackling the topic betrayal and forgiveness if you haven't watched the first video please go in the comment section below to do so and also don't forget to subscribe to like to share for the goddess team to grow and don't forget to hit on the notification bell to watch new uploaded videos for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show with us. Yeah. And do you think like um, every person in this life has to be betrayed? Like, do you think it's a normal thing for you to be betrayed or it's something that nobody has to go through? <laughs> I would say it's not something that everyone must go through. Like, it's not something, uh, how would I put it? Uh, well, it's not something, okay, I would, let, let me rephrase. It's not something that I would definitely wish for everyone to go through. Mm -hmm. But I think it's part of life's betrayal. So basically, well, it's... Jesus was it's... betrayed and he was the master, right? So... Mm -hmm. We can't expect anything less, I guess. So in one way or the other, at a certain point in time, we would experience it. Mm -hmm. So do you think, do you think like if you are being betrayed, do you have to take it in a good faith? That you, like maybe you will learn from, from that fact that it happened. You will take it as an experience, let's say. Well, um, so as I, like, okay, as I said before, it hurts, and, um, but pain, or if you're able to take pain and, um, give it into the hands of God, he's able to take the pain and make something good out of it. Mm. Um, if you try to deal with it on your own, I feel it would generate more more pain. Okay. Because then okay, so someone betrayed you and then you are harboring, you know, the person in your heart and unforgiveness that comes in and then by the time you realize you start being bitter mm -hmm. towards anyone in that category. So if for example it was um uh, a colleague then from there in your mind, you feel that all colleagues are like that, mm -hmm. or all all colleagues that are similar to this to this person is like that. Or they say it's a guy, so all of a sudden you think that all guys are like that, mm -hmm. and so you project the same like bitterness and everything towards any other guy that comes to your life, and probably they didn't do anything, but just because you had pain, you didn't deal with it, it became um, unforgiveness and because you were hurt mm -hmm. and it became unforgiveness and then it now generated bitterness and now everyone in that category is the enemy. Yeah. yeah, but if you are able to turn it into the heart of God and as betrayal, as I said, it's, it's painful, it's, it hurts and it will make you cry sometimes. But if you're able to turn all of that and give it to God, so yes, it's hurting you and you are crying hey. to God about it. You so are God with the head. Say so you have to give it to uh, God. Give it to God, give it to God. No, it's not that easy sometimes, you know. Because this is like maybe let's say you put you can't put your trust in a man or human being. You can't put yeah, your, yeah, you can't put your trust in human being. But this is the moment you've put your trust in someone, if they are any intentionally, you just you just love the person. You put your trust in the person. And this is how the person just stab in your back stab you at your back just like that. 
and the next thing that you will hear is oh give it to god oh give it to god that thing is not easy so when this thing happened how are you able to say so okay how do you deal with it let's say how do you deal with it and how will you be able because in your piano bit maka say i am giving it to god or i am allowing god to heal me because it's not easy for you to say okay fine um i will pray and then i will leave it in god's hands let god deal with me let god do whatever he wants to do with me if you go that way obviously it's going to help you but i think during the process during the time no it won't be easy so like how how would you deal about you being betrayed how do you deal about it okay so um, well yeah this is you're speaking you spoke about places and that's exactly what i'll say um sometimes god 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 is god so he does things how he wants to do it when he wants to do it mm -hmm. and yet think sometimes that like, he tends situations in a twinkle of an eye so by the time you close your eyes and you open it and everything is good everything is capable of doing it but in most cases because he wants to go on the journey with us as you said it's a process so the fact that you cry to god today doesn't mean that tomorrow necessarily the pain is gone you went to god today with your pain you cried to him you spoke to him you poured out your heart to him and the next day you expect to be like, oh, fine, everything is gone. Now the next day is still hurting. So the next day you still go to him, you cry to him, you speak with him, you pour your heart to him. I think as you're saying, um, sometimes we say, let's go to God, let's go to God. And um, I think in our society, in our community, in society, um, let's go to God, I just become like, um, a normal thing to say, like a word, like it's a standard, yeah, a standard. So that's what she's supposed to say. Go mm -hmm. to God, and then just go. And that's how people just put it. But if we really take it as he's the ultimate person, like no other person could actually help us. Nothing, like nothing else could actually help us, and he's the only one. You would know how to take it. And also, I think that um, sometimes, and I was actually talking to God in the course of this week about the same thing, we feel that God is too busy to deal with our issues. Like, okay, like let's say for now, now we have this coronavirus going around and there are people who are falling ill, people who are dying. And then you go to God and you tell him, God, I'm hurting, God, this person hurts me, I uh, I feel betrayed, I feel, you know, and, and all of that. And sometimes, and I believe it's enemy, it makes me feel like, do you think God has time for what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who are dying, dying who are yeah. dying. Like, why should he Buddha. be concerned with yeah. you hurting? But the Bible says that God knows the, the, the hair. Like, he knows the number of hair we have on our head. So he's so concerned, he's so, um, yeah, he's so concerned about us, so interested about everything, every little detail about us. So everything that we bring before him, he's concerned. And you'll be amazed that it's, it's even the little things, the little things that you think, ah, why would God be concerned? He'll be concerned about it. He will listen and actually give you an answer. So, now, summarizing what I said, I thought we first of all have to reach the point where we know that no other person can help us. We might have BFFFFF. That's when we speak about everything. Yes, they will listen. Yes, they will encourage us. Yes, we need them because um, there are times where the things in your mind are clear and you need some, like a physical person to speak life into you. Mm -hmm. But God is the one who can, who actually knows your heart, 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 and can actually reach out to your soul. Like he can, he knows how to heal, how to bring pieces back together. And we should understand that he is concerned. He is concerned about the fact that 
I don't know, he your best friend turned her, his or her back on you, he's concerned about it. It doesn't matter how little it is, but he's concerned about it. And it's a process. So the fact that she went to God today and you poured out your heart and maybe you even had peace and so finally you're able to sleep. If the next day you wake up and it still hurts, still go back to God until eventually it doesn't hurt the way it hurts three months ago or one week ago. But you should give God um, the benefit of going through the the process with us. So do you think like, okay, taking away, like, we can't put aside God, but I mean, deviating from that um, discussion, Mm -hmm. do you think if um, someone is being broken or someone is being betrayed, is it a good thing to speak it out with someone else? We've talked about the side of like going to God, speaking with God, because he is the one who knows your heart and your soul. And if something of that sort, obviously you have to go to him first. But do you think like, would you go to someone else? I don't know, maybe your best friend, your mom, your dad, someone else to speak to, just to pull out your heart and like talk about the situation. Or you would just keep it to yourself and then talk to God. And that's the only thing that you do. Um, well, it depends. Um, but I, it depends on your state and relationship with God. So, depending on your, depending on your level with God, you would know how to go about it. Mm-hmm. I feel when you are hurt, you are vulnerable. And you're vulnerable to voices, you're vulnerable to thoughts, you're vulnerable to, you're, you're just vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I would advise to speak it out with someone, but be careful who you speak it out with. Mm-hmm. I would, I would just not go to anyone just because I want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Because there are some people who would actually add some salt to your diary. So, <laughs> who <would> actually <laughs> add more in- injury to your pain, right? Yeah. So, they would, they would spoil, they would spoil my pain, they would just mm. spoil you. They, they, they wouldn't build you up, they would actually really. And there are people who would rather speak life to you mm-hmm. and by the time you finish your conversation you are rejuvenated. Yeah. So basically but you just should. you just know need to know the kind of person you are talking to. That's it. Because some people might just add nonsense to the thing. Yeah. They will just make it man basa like that. And the other people too that yeah. might also help you um come out from it, maybe through prayers yeah. or or something they might even help you yeah. with prayers and yeah um, yeah but i think even in the talking with someone i said you know it's a calm solar and so you're processing things with a person mm-hmm. i would still not make it a habit of mm-hmm. talking continuously because in the end of it all words carry power so the more you are like it's either you're progressing you know your conversation with a person or you are just um, reiterating the pain. So you're just giving more power to the pain. The more you talk about it, the more power the pain is having in your life, the more the pain is actually being rooted in your life, the more, like, the more you talk about it, the more, like, the pain never dies because you you keep talking about it. That's why I still going back to God. God is the one who, yeah, you are repeating, but in the meantime, he's healing. In the meantime, he's also showing you areas and places in your life where you yourself, you need to work on yourself because the fact that someone else hurts you, betrayed you, doesn't mean that you are perfect. Mm -hmm. You also have things that you need to work on. Mm -hmm. So it, if you're speaking it out with someone, it's either you're progressing with a person and you are moving from one level to the other, or it just becomes the same. Yes, I'll start Okay. Yeah. So one million dollar question. <laughs> Before we go back to that one. <laughs> 
okay yeah. so let's talk about forgiveness okay so before you called i was i was talking about forgiveness and i was saying that um it is very very difficult for me to forgive like it's it's so difficult for me before not now she said yeah my body yes and yes hallelujah amen amen but it was it was so difficult for me to forgive especially people that i i truly love and people that i put my trust in and then they they bam they just do something to you just like that i said especially hey baby sister stop that <laughs> so difficult for me to forgive especially so difficult for me to forgive especially <laughs> so let's dive in into um and forgiveness okay so my first question is um do you need to forgive someone before the person asks for forgiveness from you or no. you have to basically wait till the person who hurts you come to you and ask for forgiveness oh god <laughs> forgiveness <laughs> hallelujah amen <laughs> let the church amen. begin <laughs> I know. Right? Okay, so forgiveness. Oh, sorry, forgiveness. Forgiveness is actually a gift we do to ourselves, and it's not really for the person. It, 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 when you're forgiving, you um, I, okay, I had an experience right in mm-hmm. life where I felt betrayed. And um and well stop that stopped at the back actually and I had to forgive, right? Mm-hmm. And it was a process because I realized what what I was like processing the forgiveness, I I came across like a devotion and I and was given a definition of why most times we find it difficult to forgive. Mm-hmm. And um the definition that we got, okay, unforgiveness is most of the time related also to anger. We are angry at the person that hurts us and so we have all of forgiveness. And the reason why we most of the times uh, find it difficult to forgive is because we feel that the person has taken something from us that can't actually be given back, mm. whatever that thing is. So... Even if it's trust, right? Mm-hmm. We, we give the person trust, and yeah. the person was not able to live to the trust that we we give to the person, and we can't have that trust back together, like back, back, back. like the the time we spent trusting the person and whatever, whatever is invested into the person because we trusted them, we can't have it back. Mm-hmm. So that sometimes it becomes difficult because we are still holding on to that, like the the fact that we can't have back whatever we gave. Um. So, sorry, back to the question. Um, we are to forgive independently, uh, independent, independently, and uh, so even if the person doesn't ask us for forgiveness. Mm. And as I was saying, it's a gift that we, it's a gift to ourselves. We do to ourselves. Because when you are, yeah, when you and you have our forgiveness, it. <laughs> It opens the door to too many things. We are angry, we are embittered, mm-hmm. we we start viewing the world from the perspective of uh, our own forgiveness mm-hmm. and most times we we start creating situations around us that weren't there, but we create them because of our own forgiveness. Unforgiveness opens the door to too many things that are not necessary and are not necessary necessary in our life. And most of the time yeah, the thing and what in church we would say, but when I think about it, that's that's I, I think that's what even triggers me more to even forgive. Is the fact that 
about the person you are so angry about the person the person will be sleeping can you just imagine also because sometimes the person that they know that they are fulfilled of yes yes like they have no clue Mm -hmm. clue. they are just living their life yeah so in the end of it or when you forgive you just give your you give yourself freedom also because when that when you when you are having uh, forgiveness when you see the person you you have to do it, you know. Hey. You, don't, you don't want to, you want to run away. Yes. You don't want to, you want to hide. It should just be running, running about. <laughs> running away, nobody tired to. <laughs> <laughs> we see, we see. So, yeah. But it's sometimes it's, well, it's easier when the person who hurts you comes to you and tell you, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, forgive me. It's it's easier, yeah. but it's very difficult for you to say okay. Uh, even if you hurt me, I forgive you. Even if you have not come to say you are sorry, you know it's very difficult. But um, we need to try because yeah. it's for our own good. Like as she said, it's a yeah. gift for ourselves because sometimes I don't know if someone has hurt you guys before, eh? but if someone hurts you and you see the person, eh, you just want to throw a stone into the person's head. That's a funny t- <laughs> 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 Thank you.